So that's the Virgin Mary, and oh my God. Looks like it's this one level blue house right over there. up getting these two pieces that date back to the Grand Canyon in the 1970s so that's cool I'm gonna keep those little stickers on there because I think someone would like that story remember try to tell a story if you can anything that uh, could date it helps so I have the regular vase listed for 50 bucks and the wedding vase listed for $27.50 So this was a cool luxury ship that transported people to Europe, to the Bahamas, to New York, and more. This box of ephemera, which is just, I'm actually the most excited about this because there's so much money that could be made if you just take your time with this stuff. Uh, the menus alone, I think will probably pay for uh, the price that I got everything for, which was... Uh, you're gonna have to stay tuned for that part, but as I was mentioning vintage menus could sell really well Especially if they're for places that no longer exist and are associated with nostalgia a Place that people remember going that's no longer there anymore Now there's a ton of stuff in this box. I'm gonna speed through it so you could see it but always look at boxes of ephemera because they're easy to store they're easy to ship and they're really easy to list and some of the stuff in these boxes could be worth a lot of money <laughs> We'll get back to the treasures in a moment but now to some stuff i did not pick up this norman rockwell throw blanket being one of them most norman rockwell stuff is overproduced and not valuable there are exceptions but that throw blanket wasn't one of them while i do love ephemera these brochures here were just pretty generic uh, i dug through all of them and there wasn't anything that looked appealing that little shell thing didn't look good either I do love to source religious statues, but this was cheap plastic, so I put that one down. 
And you know, I love to source books, but you got to be careful with books. If they're too damaged, if they're on a boring topic, if they're just very generic, uh, these little religious pamphlet things, uh, these particular ones don't sell well. So I just left this stuff behind. You got to really be picky with the book. So then I went into this room and came across a better quality religious statue, but unfortunately it has been damaged. And you can see here the baby Jesus has all sorts of cracks and glue marks and everything. And that's not going to be something someone's going to want. So uh, when I turned it around, uh, you could see some more flaws and paint loss and stuff. So chips and things. Uh, over here too, you got to pay particular attention to the face because if you have damage to the face, um, you know, like paint loss on the nose and chips and stuff, it's really going to devalue the piece and not worth uh, picking up. Uh, vintage greeting cards and stuff could sell well. Uh, this was the only one that I picked up though, uh, really stood out to me, uh, the cat there, oversized card, and there was no um, writing inside of it, so that was good. Uh, then I looked over here and uh, dug through some of the clothes, but again, just pretty boring, stale, generic stuff. So that's what it's like on these treasure hunts. I was thinking maybe I had some supplies here, but unfortunately they had company names on them, so I couldn't use those. Uh, then be careful about these because these could be pretty deceiving. They look cool. They're these wood plaques that have different images on them. This one had religious imagery on it, but the problem is the even the vintage ones, the wood plaques, they tend not to sell well. Uh, this one was uh, more of a newer one, so I just left it behind. Then this one cracked me up because I sourced this exact painting years ago at a garage sale, and I cannot sell it. I recently relisted it, and you can see here it's had over 1,800 views with one watcher. I can't sell it. I joke with Mrs. Primetime that it looks like her, and that's why I picked it up. And then I threatened to pick this one up too, and she's like, you better not. She came with me to look for some things. But um, yeah, so I left that one behind as well. <laughs> Then there were some old granny clothes, which is pretty much in all the closets, uh, but I just couldn't find anything good to source in there. However, I looked to my left and I saw a nice vintage framed painting inside. Now you could zoom in if you would like to try to identify the artist and look it up on eBay. You could take a picture and do a search on Google Lens or sometimes save time, just flip it over. And you might find some information on the back that will easily help you type it right into eBay. That's Our Lady of Fatima, and it tells you the uh, artist name on there as well. Just five bucks. So I said, this is gonna be a good one. So put it aside, gave a little double tap. Wait for it, here we go. And that gave me some good luck. Sold it for $42. All right, so this wall is all clear. So I looked over to this wall and saw there was another one of these new wood plaques. There's nothing valuable about it, so I wasn't interested in it. I was initially interested in this tall Virgin Mary statue, but unfortunately, as you could see here, there's a lot of damage to the face, so I did not pick this one up. So that's the Virgin Mary, and oh my God, how did anybody leave this statue here? How ironic that it was right below the Virgin Mary. So I picked it up with my big hand and laid it gently on the bed because where else would you lay a statue like that? And this one looked very similar to the statue of the Kiss by Auguste Rodin. It's a marble statue made in 1882. Prior to that, there was a bronze version made to commemorate the Gates of Hell uh, by Dante's Inferno. And you could see right there on the bottom right, uh, there's a version of the couple there. But it's always been controversial uh, because of the eroticism in it. Replicas of it sell well on eBay. But there was something about this that made me even more interested in it than that. So number one was this part here. It tells a little story here. And if you pause it, you could read it, which it commemorates a meeting of these two people. There's a little funny part in the end where the lady who uh, got it said she gave him a statue date. I love how it has the exact dates on there. So again, 
dates tell stories. This is very interesting. Stories help sell things. Got to watch my hands there, but uh, be uh, careful when you're looking at these things. Make sure you're examining them for any kind of damage. You could see that there is some uh, loss of the bronze coloring on the outside. So it's not a bronze statue. It's made of a hard plaster. It weighs about 10 pounds. There wouldn't be any flaking and color loss like that if it was pure bronze. It would be way heavier. Uh, you could also see that we've got uh, some signatures here, a signature of the artist, B. Mule. Uh, the company that made it as well is also down there. And we've got another date, uh, 1970. So it really uh, helps to tie it together. Now, two other reasons that made this the kiss I could not resist had to do with size. You can see I have my tape measure out here. Size does matter when it comes to value on these statues. This is a 16 incher, which is much different than the six inch replicas you normally see on eBay. Also, the length of the base on the bottom there is really elongated and that's very different from the shorter bases that you see on most of the replicas on eBay. So for all those reasons, I listed this for $300 on eBay. I really played up that story on the bottom part of the statue. And I already have two watchers on this. It's been listed for less than a week. All right, well, the final part of the day was to head down the basement stairs. And the only thing I was able to find down here were these wooden clothes pins. I always tell you to look for these. They have the circular knob on top. Those sell really well in lots. So you got to just accumulate them at different sales. So just grab those, put them in the box, and make sure you look for any little stragglers like that that like to hide, so grab those too. All right, well, we're all done to recap. I got the kissing statue here. So I told you the price on that one was $20. I told, I'm never gonna live this one down. I got this one for 20 bucks. So uh, I think that was a great deal. I wanna get that listed ASAP. Uh, the menus alone, I think will probably pay for uh, the price that I got everything for, which was $40 five dollars as you can see there so you know uh, i think it was a good day overall i wanted to fulfill that treasure hunting need of mine but at this point in the year i wasn't looking to load up with a ton of stuff so uh, this is perfect mrs primetime did not get any jewelry because the prices on the jewelry were really expensive she told me that she saw someone in the beginning pick up five brooches and they were charging $120 for five brooches. So she was just like, forget it. So she just, she just left like within 10 minutes. So that was a short lived stay for her. Now, one place you will not want to have a short lived stay is the Mutton Ridge Finds eBay store. That's the eBay store of Sandra Ladner, who's a longtime subscriber and member of this channel. I feature all members stores or accounts in one of my YouTube videos. As you can see here, she has lots of great items in her store. There's many items that are on sale. Perfect for Christmas shopping. The link is in the description section and in the comment section. So check out the join button if you want to learn more about the primetime membership perks. One of the things that can happen is you can make money from being a member of the channel that recently happened to uh, Marjorie East, who is featured in my Facebook group, which is another perk for all members. And as a result of that feature, she made $100 in sales in one day. I hope you enjoyed uh, this treasure hunt. Remember, always look out for this ephemera stuff. And... Uh, I'll see you at the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care. Daisy, you got your chicken? <laughs> you got your chicken again? <laughs> oh, my God. Thing's almost as big as you.